So while I scarf down this donut, why don't you talk about where we were at before here? Mm. Like we did three different places, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So. So while I scarf down this donut, why don't you talk about where we were at before here? Mm. Like we did three different places, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So we started um, walking at outside Te Papa, which is um, the like a museum of New Zealand. You could put it that way. It has a bunch of um, kind of like like excursions and things like that, a um, whole bunch of uh, stuff in there that is either related to like New Zealand, which is like native insects, native trees, sort of like, um, it has things on uh, Gallipoli, which is one of the um, wars, I guess, one With of the, the conflicts. Anzac troops, yeah, right? the Anzac troops, yeah, the Anzac troops, yeah, were sent to, even though, you know, like, New Zealand is, I think nowadays feel very strongly about it because they felt they were fighting, not their war, if it makes sense. Right. They were fighting for the British, so that is really, really beautiful um, sort of uh, thing there. Um, and then it has a whole bunch of things that just like rotate over time. You know, we sure. have like local artists put up some of their stuff. You know, some things travel from around the world. We display them, so it's a really sort of like a little local gem um, in terms of, I guess, art stuff like that. Um, then we walked past the, so we walked on the waterfront past the statue of a leaning person. I don't 
it's right. like it's a man versus a leaning person. Um, yeah, we don't know what their gender yeah, identity exactly. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're respecting so, their ambiguity. Exactly, which is actually true. I think they look quite ambiguous. You can't really tell. Well, um, they looked naked, but I don't remember yeah, seeing a wiener. Exactly. So, so you know. I think that's that's exactly that. So I think it's a little. If you look up um, Wellington on Google, that's the image that comes up, and it's like I guess the symbol of freedom. You know, the free person, you know, just standing there. Getting right. the wind and the water into their um, face, body, whatever. Um, yeah, and then we walk past this sign. There's a new sign called I Love Wellington, yeah. which is pretty, I think that's pretty recent. I would say it's been there for maybe a year and a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, and just. So only in the last year is anyone welcome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we also walk past the farmers market, um, right. which we call sometimes veggie market, roots market, um, where farmers from around Wellington region drive their trucks with vegetables and fruits and right. stuff like that, and they put it on the display, and people, local people, come around buy like veggies for the week. So, what's like what's Wellington's big industry? Is it a fishing city? Is it a tech city? That's a good question. Um, I think there are three sort of big industries uh, for Wellington. Okay. One is obviously government, so we have right. government, let's say, capital of New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of sort of government jobs, um, you know, yeah, just, just government jobs, mostly around like policy and project management and that side of things. Uh, the second probably really big industry for Wellington is filming. Uh, we have Weta oh, okay. Digital, we have Weta right. Um, lots of like film studios and we know that Avatar was filming there. And on that topic, did that exist before Lord of the Rings or no. was that created for Lord it of the Rings? It was created for Lord of the Rings, yeah. So did Lord of the Rings create the film industry? Pretty much. Also really cool to know that the people who are like, like the other day um, I was walking down the street and I saw Jacinda Ardern, who is our ex now Prime Minister. Um, okay. And you know that like, you just, just saw her walking yeah, down the street. Yeah, just walking down the street, you know. And you see politicians walk like from the parliament. To well, and that's get fair. Their takeaways, um, you, know? you get that in Juneau too, or yeah. in like Washington D.C. to an extent, because like yeah. in the U.S., I think politicians are enough of like. I, don't know, I think the U.S. is just a country people hate for justifiable reasons. <laughs> yeah. So certain politicians are high enough profile, you need security for them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, like I imagine someone like New Zealand is not that big. But I know one of the big reasons Jacinda Ardern resigned was because she felt like she was in a position where she didn't feel safe. Yeah, like when she walks around, you can see that she's she's like walking with security, but it's not. Uh, okay. It's not like that into your face obvious that right. it's like you know it's like a unit someone dressed with you. an umbrella yeah yeah, yeah. that sort of stuff um because they had never had to deal with stuff like that in the, yeah. in the past but i think on reflection i think that's something that they need to think about it's like if something like this happened again is there a better strategy we could have done well and that's the struggle too right like i think the thing we're learning in america right now is we know how to identify when we need to talk to someone about something. Well, like maybe you're at work and you've got someone who always drinks the last coffee and never refills the machine. <laughs> we know we got to talk to that guy. Yeah. But I don't think we've been taught yet how to have those conversations. I agree, yeah. Um, like, and I, I get this on both sides. You get, like, I get people where, like, I'll talk about how electric cars are often burning more fossil fuel than cars that use gasoline because of the manufacturing that goes into making it and the lithium battery and all of the things of the manufacturing side of making an electric car and there's people that care a lot about the environment and are right to do so who get mad at me at saying electric cars are actually destroying the environment more than gas powered cars mm. and I'm like look the fact that you're upset about this is a good thing but you, you don't have a conversation by yelling at me about yeah. this. You have a conversation by, so what solutions can we find? Because an electric car should be more eco-friendly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, that's the struggle we face in anthropology. So one of the biggest topics in anthropology revolves around the word tradition. Because tradition is 
kind of like a meaningless word when you think about it. Because something that's traditional today was new at some point. So there is no traditional thing that has existed for three million years, except bipedalism, I guess, but I don't know. And so a lot of people use the word tradition as an excuse for holding on to certain things. And sometimes it's fine. Like Mardi Gras is a traditional holiday in New Orleans, and it's cool. You get jazz music, you got beignet, you got chicory coffee. Who doesn't yeah. love that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you got like soccer is a traditional sport in England. Who doesn't love watching the Premier League? But there's also traditions that are toxic. Mm. And people use the word tradition to avoid having to not do it. Yeah. And so that's when it becomes an issue is you've got to recognize when things that have been done for multiple generations are wrong. Slavery is traditional to American history. But I think we can all agree that slavery is bad yeah. and it, we shouldn't do it. That's a tradition that was a good thing to get rid of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, no, obviously, like, I, I would agree with that. I think it's, um, like, what you mentioned before, it's like, how do you have this conversation without feeling like I'm trying to attack you for the things that you deeply invested in or believe, yeah. which is like, it's not an attack, it's just, let's have a conversation, let's find, like, pros and cons. Particularly when it comes to ethnicity and gender, there is so much biased data um, out yeah. there that if you were to train your models or whatever, make decisions based on that data, especially financial decisions, yeah. it's like all of a sudden, like a person who's identifying as a female of a color cannot get a mortgage, you know? Well, it it's is. Stuff like I that. just watched a video about this, about use of AI in hiring practices. Mm -hmm. And they found that in the United States, there's a bias, not just towards white men, in how the AI forwards, receive, like filters resumes for which resumes are gonna reach a human eyeball. Yeah. But it's specifically white men named Jared who played lacrosse in college. So if your name is Jared, but you play baseball, your resume is not reaching human eyeballs. If you played lacrosse, but you were a woman, your resume is not reaching human eyeballs. That's how bad the AI got before someone was like, why do we have all these Jareds that played lacrosse in the office place? <laughs> so we're about out of time here. Do you have any upcoming projects you're working on? Um, I don't really have anything that I know is lined up. There's a couple of gigs that um, I'm looking at to help with like short films and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, and I have some personal projects uh, to do with my software stuff. So, okay, because yeah. you're going, you, we ran into people and you're going to the UK. Yeah, and that, that as well. That's, I'm hoping maybe end of this year, beginning of next year, depending okay. on how gotcha. fast I can save. Um, yeah. yeah, so hoping to, yeah. I guess part ways with Wellington for a bit. Will you try to do some acting while you're out in the UK? Because I'm sure the scene, there's probably more opportunities yeah, out there. Yeah, I'll give it a go. I'll, okay. see, I'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, we'll definitely try it, but... Yeah. As I said to you, the main thing that I like about acting, or more creative side of things, is I get to meet very interesting people whose brain works very different comparing to the people in the sort of your office corporate environment. Not yeah. to say it's better or worse, it's just different. And I like yeah. being able to be exposed to that and be like, well, it's like, you know, you're thinking those things, but they're like, that makes no sense. And it's like, is it because I've never met people like that who think like right. that? Or is it because I have had some misconceptions about things and it really helps to kind of really like broaden your mind like, well yeah. and i'm that same way and what kills me is i meet people at hostels like let's say there's four germans staying at the <laughs> same hostel together they all just stick to themselves and i'm like you've come all this way from germany just to spend your time with other mm. germans yeah, yeah, like yeah. i personally i hate meeting fellow americans yeah. while i'm outside the u.s yeah because i didn't leave the u.s to just spend time with other people from the u.s yeah.
This video was made possible by contributions to this channel's Patreon from viewers like you. Thank you.